Hello everybody and welcome back to another edition of our M14 set review. Today we are talking all about the Black Cards and Magic Core Set 2014. I'm Evan Irwin. And I'm Brad Nelson. He is. And we are back talking about every card that has a black mana symbol in it, including a few artifacts there at the end. We're going to get started with a Cursed Spirit, as you see it on your screen. And I, this feels sort of like the Black Flyer. It is, and that's exactly what it is. It's Black Evasion, Intimidate. Mm -hmm. You know, it hits the entire color pie, but usually just sticks with black right. uh, when it comes to core sets, and that's what it is. It's a, it'll just get some damage in. Uh, and and they, they bleed it over to red a little bit, too. Yeah. Um, like, red and black, they don't really get flying, so they need mm -hmm. something, and their something is Intimidate. And I can't remember the name of it, but there's a boar that was in red that was Intimidate. Uh, yes, they, and it came from Zendikar Block, and yeah. I can't remember the name of it, but yes, it was a four mana, three, two, Intimidate, just yeah. exactly what this was. And, and the it. stats were awesome, so I think, like, these stats are just perfect, right. a three, two, you don't need that much toughness, because usually you're not going to be, you know, brawling that often, so... Right. So it's not like a windmill first pick slam, you know, whatever, but it is very good. You will pick it after bombs and removal. You will be happy to have it in your deck. Like, and yeah, and, and it, it's, it's better than Assault Griffin. So like value this a little bit higher because it doesn't die to any of the removal that just hits creatures in the air. Mm -hmm. It doesn't get tapped by Air Servant. And there's less, cre there's less black creatures than there are creatures with flying, I think. I, I would I would say that's a safe bet Playable. now. Right. I mean, you know, and, and I said earlier that black normally gets intimidated versus flying. It's not necessarily true, but mm -hmm. regardless... This is a sweet creature. You will enjoy it in limited decks. Just basically play it in limited all the time. Yep. It's a good one. Alter's Reap. Here we go. Another Innistrad block card. So I, for anyone that knows uh, at least my last six months of professional career, you know I like me a Doom Traveler. Mm. And one of the things about Alter's Reap, I'm just going to say it now, is everyone asks me about this card. Everyone just wants to put this in every single Aristocrat, Doom Traveler, Lingering Souls type deck. Do it's they like, really? Alter, yeah, they just want Alter's Reap. They're just like, that guy draw two cards. And it's just like... It's not that good. It's actually not good at all. Um, this type of effect, the best case scenario is when you can sacrifice a Doom Traveler, you can sacrifice a creature response to removal, but you might board this in against the blue-white deck with a million claustrophobias and pacifisms. And, sure, and, and, and limited for sure. Yes, and limited. And in standard, just don't touch it. Just, I mean, you know, the thing is, like, those 1-1s, one even the Doom Traveler, if, they're, if they don't have anybody to block it, then just take 5% off their life total. You don't, you don't have to get cute and draw yeah. cards with them. I mean, you like, the value comes from having all those creatures in play and being able to do various things with yep. them and having board presence, and this actually takes it away for two random cards, mm -hmm. which could just be lands or whatnot. It could be things that don't affect the board or just more of the stuff that you just sacked. Like, you know, they're, they're, you're sort of losing value for not a, a lot of game, but it is, it is sort of a teaching card. Exactly. And you play cards like Doom Traveler for flexibility, and a card like Alter's Reap takes it away. Right. So you don't really want to do that. Now, again, in Limited, you, you can bring it in a little bit. Mm -hmm. I, I think I, it's I think, fun. Yeah, I think, again, people are going to find that it's not as powerful as it looks. No. And we found that out when it was first printed, and we're sort of reiterating it now. Yep. So, Artificer's Hex, the weirdest thing. It is. <laughs> it's so crazy. It, oh, what is this it, it card? Just, enchant the equipment, and then the equipment kills the creature, and then no one wants to put the yeah. equipment on anything anymore. It's so sweet. But there's, the art's weird as crap. I don't get it. There's just not enough equipment, and I feel like like th the best way to use this card is if you could put it on your equipment and then equip their guys, but that's not a possibility. <laughs> oh, no, man. This card's like, it's just totally unplayable. But it is hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> and I love it because it's so weird. I've never seen anything like it magic ever. And I think that's amazing. Yeah. That's cool. It's just, but don't, don't. I mean, you'll play it for fun <laughs> if you want to get some, some laughs in. But this is a card that, like, I'm glad it exists, but I don't want to play it. I don't even know. I don't know if I'm glad it exists. This except one of my uncommon black slots. That was removal, buddy. Oh, good gosh. Come on, gosh. Watsy, More removal. Enjoy it. Blightcaster. This is sweet. Is this, this is the white black enchantment deck. There's a white black yeah, enchantment deck. There is, for and sure. especially because you have like quake sickness, and like if you get to like quake sickness, kill one guy, kill a different guy, you get Oromancer, the quake sickness. Yeah, like th that's here. It's like it's like a really bad version of fairies. You know, like the dream spoiler <laughs> witches and stuff. <laughs> Like, it's like yeah. you're working really hard to make this work, but once it happens, it just feels so good. Oh, it's certainly yeah. When when all the when all the when all the chambers sort of fire and you play, you know, this to that to enchantment mm -hmm. to enchantment, kill this, kill this, kill this. Like, oh, this is a card your opponents might not necessarily be afraid of at first, 
but we'll learn to respect Yeah, if you it. untap and just cast any enchantment, it's Literally just like almost that. any of them. Yeah. Like, before combat, after combat, like, you know. Even this one? Okay, not that not one. Not that one. Okay. But. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because that would be literally its best use. Yeah. Is that it did minus two, minus two. So you played, like, a really weird disfigure, and you needed equipment in play to play it. Yep. Mm. Weird. Puzzle accomplished, you win. Right. At the end of the day, it's still a four mana two three. Like it's not terrible stats. No, and it and it, and it takes up removal. Like opponents that can kill it will probably just kill it. Like because they don't want you to get a two yeah. for one out of things. You know that you totally can. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's and a it's got name. purple art, and I like purple. It's some sweet purple art. Yeah, there is really cool art though. I bet it's got. I bet it's a sweet foil. Your flesh is unprepared for my gifts, buddy. <laughs> what uh, the scariest, uh. most freaky art. It's been a while since I've seen one that's freaky. I'm talking like it's, macabre waltz freaky. I, I thought like a couple months ago when Liz Nugent's vampire came out, I thought that was pushing it just a little. Mm -hmm. And then this came out, I'm just like. And she's like, I mean, just like the streaks and the red eyes and the, the blood all over the The hand. corpses behind and her. The cor like, and she's even got another hand over here yeah. that's all bloody. And like, really? That's the freakiest flavor text ever? What? Yeah, the travelers were warned to watch out for children on the road. Yes, what? Like, if you didn't think she was a kid before, oh my god. Yeah. It's so a small child is eating humans. Art description. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, with that said, they just basically pumped up the uh, the blood throne vampire type creature to a uh, to a gray ogre. Yeah, they just brought back Nantuko Husk and made it a vampire. Yeah, yeah, maybe. yeah. That's a better way to put it. Yeah. Uh, Nantuko Husk vampire style. I mean, I'm still. I, I don't hate the art. Don't get me wrong. I think it's really cool because it's so shocking. It's just shocking. Yeah, it is. It's just a gruesome piece of art. Like, <laughs> like. This is the art that your grandma sees and just like, oh, you what know? is this devil yeah. game? What are you playing this game for? This is crazy, <laughs> you know. But I mean, I don't know. What do you think about it? Uh, I well, I definitely after seeing this card, uh, I definitely looked through at every single vampire to try to see if I could play me some blood throne or not blood throne bloodline keepers. Mm. And I was trying to figure out some vampire deck, and nice. I found out Blood Baron was a vampire. I actually didn't know what creature type it was. Blood Baron was scope, man. That card's yep. real. Uh, but in the end. It's just kind of an expensive sack outlet when we already have Varls, Cartel Aristocrat. I'd even rather play Blood Throne Vampire because you're paying one mana for one power and that's not enough when the rest of your deck is about sacrificing. Right. And no, I just don't I don't see it. I mean, you know, it's an Antugo Husk, it's okay. I mean you're gonna you're gonna be able to play it in limited. You're not gonna be first, you know, first picking this card mm -hmm. or fourth or fifth picking this card, but you're gonna get it probably on the wheel and it's okay. It's a dude. It's there's a some cards over. there's some cards that end up comboing well with it. Sure. Yeah, I mean, there, there's some, like, little combos, and we'll find them as we keep going along, but, you know. The Mario Skeleton. Mm. I don't know what it's called, but. Yeah, the, oh, now I forgot the name of it, but I yeah, see we'll the picture. Yeah, we'll get to them. We're getting there. Um, Blood Baron, though. Whew. That's a freaky picture. Yeah. Bog Brew Witch. This Here is the Bog go. Witch, as you had mentioned earlier. I almost got its whole name. You got really close. <laughs> this is a card I do want to first pick. I want to first yes. pick and just run the Bog Brew Witch deck. I totally do. Oh, I mean, it, this is the only card in the set. That when I open at the pre-release, like I'm going to be playing two H two out of giant, mm -hmm. and I'm going to open. If we see one of these, I'm going to open all the rest of the packs and not even look at the rares anymore. Just look at the commons. Be like, <laughs> where they? Are they here? Where that collagen? Where them? Where them <laughs> festering <laughs> newts? Give me them festering newts. Come on now. It's so good. Yeah. So the the idea, you know, that you can um, just go find any either of those cards and put them on the battlefield, multiple newts mm -hmm. if you want, like at instant speed in response to things. Uh, it's sweet. Yeah, like, I like it. Again, and in terms of the design, as we talked about earlier, I'm a huge, huge fan. Wizards do more of this. Don't go overboard, but always do something like this oh. in the core set. Yeah, it's awesome. And I'll, I'm telling you, fans of mine out there, if you guys want me to like invest some time into my content and to, you know, searching up some festering nits, I'll do it. You just, you just have, you're just like, you have you to tell me, me though. Me? You want me to trade and post? I'm gonna go crazy. I'll do it. Oh God. <laughs> Anyway, all right, so let's go back a little bit. Uh, in limited, I think it's really cool. Yeah, it's awesome. It could You could get run over while you're trying to do cool things. No, because you have festering goblins or festering newts, but they're festering goblins. You could get run over while you're doing cool things. No. <laughs> you can't. This is a it's weird really role cool. reversal right now. You can do this, I swear. Do you just pick this and take all your festering newts? It's hard to get run over when all your guys kill their guys. Yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> that's great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, sir, it's fine. The uh, Child of Night returns. 
Yeah. Uh, you know, good old fashioned bear that this, has life. It's blank. a great bear because it trades early to help you set up your bog witch brews and your your festering <laughs> newts and stuff like that. <laughs> but it just trades and gains you a little life. If it comes down on turn two and your opponent doesn't have a two drop, it's really good because you just get that first lifelink swing in, and all of a sudden, like for the rest of the game, until they completely overpower you, you have a small advantage. So I like that this is a bear that trades early, but also gives you a four point swing any time it gets to the attack. Yeah, I was going to say, man, that, that four point swing, two up, two down, like that's really important. It's, it sounds kind of, you know, mediocre or not, yeah. Im not impacting, but it, over the course of a game, you know, a lot of times you'll win at two life mm -hmm. after you got in with him once, or they'll lose, you know, just by two because yeah. you got in with him once. So that, that, that swing is important. He's a good man. You're probably going to play him. I don't want to go overboard with him. Like I've seen, you know, I've gotten sealed pools with like three child of knights and that's just like too many. It depends on what else you're doing. Like, if you have to attack in the early game, it kind of sucks that your guys are two ones. Mm -hmm. But if you have a late game engine, like putting lizards in big bulls, <laughs> then it's, it's like really good. Bloop, 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 and yeah. it'll be all <laughs> in between. So, yeah, if you can put lizards in bulls, great. If not, don't go crazy with it. But he, he is a fine man on the curve. Yep. You will, you will enjoy bashing in with him. Uh, Corpse Hauler. I like this card a lot. It's it's really unique. I like the one. My favorite thing about this card is the art looks like it was predated from this time. Like it looks like a a a, a 2000s, a 1990s. Yeah, it doesn't look like a art. magic card art, sort of as we've been known. Yeah. I mean, sometimes magic cards go from sort of this extreme to what looks almost like real, you know, uh, oils or uh, mm -hmm. or acrylics or what have you, um, versus like the super shiny, yeah. uber polished. You know, just was made and crafted in Photoshop thing. Um, but for me, the fact that it's a 2 1 for 2, so it gets in on the curve, mm -hmm. which is sweet. And then you can do this at instant speed, which is another one. Yep. Um, sometimes they'll try to slow down that effect and say you can only do it at sorcery speed or whatever, mm -hmm. which is terrible. Um, where in actuality, you can be like, bash all in with my Duder guys. Oh, you want to block the corpse hauler? Well, in that case, I'll trade him for this other yep. thing, and then I'll get in with the rest of my guys. And I'll chain with a bunch of corpse haulers. I like so corpse hauler and corpse hauler. Yeah. Corpse Hauler and a Corpse Hauler is a thing, just like Gravedigger, except Which, now you, Except they're not zombies, so then how can you return these humans from the graveyard if they're not zombies? Mm. How do two Corpse Haulers carry each other? You have Vorthos now? Hmm. 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 That's acting weird. <laughs> anyway, it's not a super high pick, I feel. It's it's a good man. Like, I mean, you, you do understand that. I'd pick him above Child of Night. Yeah. It's fine. Everyone told me to stop with trading posts. All the artifacts were trade out, and then they just reprinted trading posts. Yeah, I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> it's all back, baby. Uh, nothing in constructed, but unlimited. He's a good fine man. Yep. All right. Corrupt. It's back. Woo! Uh, I, I I've been working on some brews. Um, uh -huh. Okay. The it, brews. Like I really like. So I really liked the uh, the black splash green control deck that never really got any footing in standard, mm -hmm. but. Uh, now, like, there's a, there's a couple sweet cards that you get to interact with in there, but, like, I really like Corrupt. And now, if there's ever a way that I could build a bug control deck in Standard with, like, one or two Corrupts on the top end, mm -hmm. uh, trying to get to where whenever you cast it, it's at least five. I don't know if that's you kinda, possible. You kind of need it to be, like, five. Yeah. I mean, I've seen some people run out some mono black decks because, mm -hmm. you know, that's the thing everybody wants to do. Um, we're going to get the Life Bane Zombie, which is my second favorite card in the set, which is amazing. Um, but, you know, the fact that you have all the dual lands uh, kind of discourages you from playing the, the you know, M14 mm -hmm. in a straw uh, dual cycle. Well, there is no M14 dual cycle anymore. Or M13, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah we can touch on that later. But, uh, but, well, I mean, we might as well touch on it now because if we don't, I'll never remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the fact that M14 does not have a dual land cycle does impact this card a little bit. Um, but, it, honestly, it impacts more of standard well, than it does yeah. this card. Well, it actually just... I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it right here, right now. Here we go. I think fetch lands are coming back in Theros. Ooh, well, I already bet on the legendary lands. But I think fetch lands will. I think it's time for them to recycle like, cycle them back in. Everyone loves the dual land cycles. They're not going to have fetch duels and buddy lands, or like the M13s I call buddy lands. Right, right, right. And so, like, I definitely think we're going to have a fetch duel. So is this your pie bet? No, we already... Oh, we get two pie bets? Why? You're, you're one of my pie... We're, it's pies forever. Woo! Pies for everybody. I get the block. What? No, no you just I get fetch lands for the block. You got the block, I get the block. Whoa, whoa, whoa. For the block? Yeah, I get oh, fetch yes, for yes, the yes. block. So they don't come probably, in the first. Well, I'm probably just wrong because blah, blah, blah. They don't want to do legendary dual lands, but I don't care. Um, and I get the block lands. for fetch lands. You get the block for fetch lands. I'm 
What? So if they print any fetch fetch lands yeah. in the entire block, I win. Yes. And you win for the legendaries. Yeah. That's that's. I just want to say I get the entire block to get fetch oh, lands. They might come yes, out later. Yes. Yes. Oh, when you when you said about the block, I thought you meant like you know with like the the blocking the pie. I was like, what? Well, <laughs> what? You don't get to block the pie. pie I get to block the pie. The pie can't be blocked. Okay. It's not. <laughs> but I get to block the pie. The, Those the are the, pie. that's the stipulation on that bet only. Uh, yeah. I was like, <laughs> block the pie. What? <laughs> um, corrupt. However. You know, Liliana of the Dark Realms, we'll get to that in a little bit. I want it to be good. It's terrible. It's terrible. And just in constructed, obviously. And, um, yeah, so we're going to keep moving on. All right. Corrupt. It's fine. It's not good in limited. Not good enough. It's not really good in constructed right now unless somebody breaks mono black. Uh, Dark Favor. Yeah. That's that's a card worth paying for. It is. It is. Divine Favor is just infinitely worse than Dark Favor. And this is another. This is the enchantment that you want to ornament or back. Yes. This is the. This is where the black white enchantment deck sort of mm -hmm. starts to coalesce, because you're paying one life, sure, but like plus three plus one is huge. It's very big, especially on any creature with intimidate or flying or any kind of evasion. Um, it, if you have your Johnny's chosen, I think it's called, mm -hmm. or your oh. two three guy, and you yeah. can get, get some life loss, like. Holy cow, you this make card's a 5-3 for two mana with the Johnny's Chosen out. Ah, yeah. <laughs> that's crazy. That's that's good times. So, yeah, this card is very good. I don't pick it super highly, but, I mean, you might not wheel it. No. I, don't, I don't know if it's going to come back it's, on it's, you. It's a pretty good card. People people are aware of how good this card mm -hmm. is, so probably in the 5th to 8th range. Yeah, that's what I would say. Something like that. I 8th pick that mostly. Now, Dark Prophecy was the StarCityGames.com preview for M14. Um <clears throat> She does apparently have the heart of an animal or something. Is it a bunny? Uh, I think it's a goat. Um, <gasps> How uh, dare you? I know. Dude, the, from the Those go for really good value at the trading post. <laughs> 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 and you're just wasting it right there. Oh, again. To draw a card and lose a life. Huh. Did you know that you could just return an artifact from your graveyard instead of that card? Kill the goat for a good reason. Ignorant witches. Gah. All right, so as a man who plays a lot of junk aristocrats, <laughs> Does this work in Junk Aristocrats? No, gosh, I don't have the mana to fade Triple Black. But I do think you that this You don't? Is like, the mana's pretty sick nowadays. Yeah, but you only have, like, 16 to 17 sources. Mm. So it's, it's kind of like saying, can you play... Well, Boris Reckoner's not the same thing because it costs two different colors. You get to fix it. It's like saying, can you play Boris Reckoner and Jund? That's actually a good example. Okay. Can you play Boris Reckoner and Jund? No. That's a, exactly the same. So, um, but I do think that there's enough... Tools, I don't know where it's at, but there is going to be a mono black deck during the summer. Mm -hmm. I think Summer Magic is where Dark Prophecy might see some cyborg play hmm. uh, because there's just enough black cards now. You still have like the messengers, the one drops. Now you have some good two drops. We'll get to more uh, as we go on, but there's just enough cards to make a mono black deck. Hmm. And, and I don't think you can play this like, or even if it's black splash white, just splashing for like lingering souls and and Cartel Aristocrat or something like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, this card does seem very powerful, very good against control decks, but there are, there's some other cards that we'll get to over the course of the week that I think really shut down control strategies already. Yeah, I mean, you just don't need this to shut down control strategies when aggro decks are shutting down control strategies yeah. just like by existing that much. And this is not a card you'd ever want against an aggro deck no. because you're just going to get you know smashed. I mm -hmm. actually, for the investment, I don't know why they made you lose life. I actually think gaining a life would have been reasonable. I, I, I understand. I understand. But do you see what magic cards look like these days? Do you see what magic cards look like? I know how spoiled you are. Are you kidding me? <laughs> That's insane. No. Draw a card and gain a life? Yeah. You are crazy. I don't think you need to lose you, life. You'd have to add like four colorless mana to that card. What? It, yes. That's just so it would be completely out of the realm of anything constructed. You and could just would. not add any mana to it and be fine. You are insane. Do you, see, do you understand what these magic cards look like? These Boris Reckoner. Just once you see the card, then you just work r around it. But it's not like everyone saw Boris Reckoner and was like, "This card's going to define standard." Yeah, they know? did. Define that Pro Tour. It defined the Pro Tour, but what I'm saying is during spoiler season. Yeah, they did. No, oh, I did. You okay? You're <laughs> you know you were above the curve. Huh? I was above the curve. Uh, Fridays on Stars Games. Um, anyway, Dark Prophecy as a card is not something you're gonna you're able to run limited because the man is too bad. And in constructed, there's a lot of aggro. I mean, you might be able really to draft fast. a mono black deck just because you're gonna try to corrupt people and you're the only corruptor. 
Maybe. Yeah, I mean, a lot of core sets you've had some mono black decks. It's possible. If, if a mono black deck is possible, then high five. I want to run it because mm -hmm. I love mono black. Don't get me wrong. It's just, you know, you got to have the corrupts. You got to have a card like this. You got to have all the good stuff. And yeah. some of the really good stuff, as we'd seen, relies on enchantments that you know, would be better if you paired it with another color. Yeah. And then once you pair your deck with another color, this card is like not castable anymore. <laughs> it makes me sad. It's mm -hmm. a cool card, though. I think it has a ton of potential. I do, too. I don't know what the potential is going to lead to, though. Death Gaze Cockatrice. This is just a very unique card. Like, it's like, a v like I consider like Stinkweed Imp with like Dredge, and you're paying an extra mana for a power and losing Dredge. Like, this card's fine because it's a flying black creature, but it's it's a little overcosted. I mean, it is. It's it, this is meant to be sort of a. It's a limited only card. It's here to to show you that you know, man. Did you know how good you had it with Stinkweed Imp? Because yeah. you had it really good. Because it doesn't really matter to me that much how much their power is, as long as it's more than zero. Mm -hmm. um, so the death touch, death touch can just trade up for anything ever. You know, the the power in this card is that it literally just trades for any ground pounder, any flyer ever, and is able to get in by itself. And it, and it can get in a little bit with the two power, so it's kind of cool. But like, right. you look at a card like Deadly Recluse that's also in the set, and it's just much more powerful than this card. It really is. I mean, this is sort of, it's mm -hmm. a little underwhelming yep. at times, and but you know. Black doesn't supposed to specialize in flying, and this is where you're paying a lot for that type of evasion but, plus the ability. Yeah, but for for this card's sake, it is a cockatrice, which is kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Pretty sweet. It's a neato card. I yeah. love the art. I think the art's cool. Mm -hmm. Super cool birdie looking thing. All right, Diabolic Tutor is back. It's still bad. Um, no, it's very good. You should all play it against us. Mean, yeah. yeah, against us. When you just yeah. board it right in, I'll let you pre-board it. It's yeah. Cool. Got it. Yeah, Diabolic Tutor is slow, it's clunky, it gets you what you need, but at the cost of a turn or close to a turn. You're, you're basically saying I'm skipping my turn to go find the card I want. And no. in today's magic world, you'll often lose the game while you're busy finding the stuff you want. Or, and this has happened to me, I'll go Diabolic Tutor for something, and then they'll do something that would have made me get a completely different yeah. card. And I'm like, oh, I didn't mm -hmm. know they had blah, blah, blah. I'd have went and got a Doomblade or whatever. But, yeah, so yeah. the this this card can dagger you. It's it's the fixed Demonic Tutor yeah. for twice the price. And, you know, as you see when they try to, you know, fix things uh, by making them more expensive, they just make them unplayable. But there's one good thing about it is it might finally give people the chance to actually battle lits before it rotates out. Eh? That's the thing. That's you might be thing. able to battle the wits. Battle the wits. Ooh, you bringing the bad stacks to the tournament. Good that luck. <laughs> uh, limited wise, I have I've ran this in sealed and not felt terrible about no, it. No, it's fine in sealed. And sealed you is such time. a slow format. You're usually able to to skip that turn in order to get like the best thing you got. You well, know, for the bombs. not the best thing you got. You gotta have the best thing in the format to go play Diabolic Twitter. You don't just play it. And just always get your best card. You have to. You, that card has to be worth something. It's got to be worth something. But at the yeah. same time, the fact that that Diabolic Tutor turns into a second copy of, yeah, all the things. You know, second copy of of Doomblade, a second copy of your Bomb Rare. Like that to me is powerful mm -hmm. in the format that 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 is that slow. Because when you get to the world of draft, you know, like this card just doesn't do what you. I want I mean, it to can do. go get you a Ring of Three Wishes. Sure can. And then the th so you can pay to pay and then pay one more time. To, to go find a card. Yeah. Yep. That's useful. Doomblade, baby. Boom. It's finally back. Now, I still love murder. I think murder is a sweet, beautiful, like, just a perfect design. It is a perfect design, but Kill it the is thing. slow. It is so slow. Yeah, and, okay, so, pretty much over the last year, how long it's been since we got Doomblade, what was it, M12? It was an M12. Okay, so uh, for the last two years, the thing that I've learned is that, or year, actually, only one year, that, that I learned is without Doomblade, it's so hard or so difficult to like kill Boros Reckoner or Thunder My Hellkite. Like you have to sack a guy to slip it or you have to murder or putrefy that are slow. Mm. Like now that we get Doomblade back, it finally feels good to kill creatures again. And that was the biggest issue mm -hmm. is you weren't fat, the removal wasn't fast enough to kill the early guys, but then couldn't kill the late guys. So abrupt case saw a lot of play that it probably shouldn't have seen. Mm, because this didn't exist. Because yeah, you didn't really kill artifacts or enchantments all the time. You just could kill like an early creature. Right. Now, the I, I think some of why Abrupt Decay was seen some plays because it could kill uh, Unflinching Courage mm -hmm. and things like that. That you know the hex deck that you hex blade deck that you'd have problems with. Um, but you know Doomblade is is good old fashioned 
Like ever since it came out in M10, everyone's loved it. And I, I, I didn't notice until now it's actually uncommon. That's huge for limited. Yes, yes. I thought it was a common. Oh, um, did it get the bump? Oh yeah, I got the bump. Okay, got the bump. Yeah. Well, as it should because it is it is premium and not everyone yeah. needs you know two Doom Blades in every black deck yeah. or whatever. But which I think is what you would run into when it was common. Oh, that's what ended up happening. You'd have decks with two or three Doom Blades. Right. Because you were the black drafter, yep. and like the you know four people weren't drafting next to you black, and then you get all of them. Mm -hmm. um, and here you might get one, might get two, might have zero. They're premium, yeah. That's that. Th these are going to go high. Yeah, this is where if you're playing black or if you see it in pack one, pick one. You know, if you see it, pack one, pick two. You should just pick it up. Like it's, it's very important removal. It's one of the best cards, and I'm pretty shocked to see it out on common. So, I mean, that's where it belongs. But it's always been a common, and I'm so used to limited formats. If I have Doomblade, it's a common. Right. So this, this like, uh, my whole mind is melting about limited right now. <laughs> I'll try to keep it together. I like it. So Duress is a common. Yep. And is no Thoughtseize. And everyone was sort of expecting Thoughtseize to come back because it wasn't in Modern Masters. And, you know, there was a spot open in the name and number crunch, you know, for Thoughtseize. It ended up being the skeleton guy we'll talk about later. But, you know, you have Duress. Duress is fine. Everyone loves Thoughtseize because it was the best card in Lorwyn. Like, it was just, and that includes the Planeswalkers. Like, one, and now you can see it because Thoughtseize it's is, what, like $60, $70? Yeah, it's huge. Something ridiculous. That card was rare. It wasn't mythic. It was just rare. Like, but, you know, everyone needs infinite copies, mm -hmm. and the foils are worth infinite dollars. So, me personally, not having a foil yet for my cube, I was hoping it was going to be in here yeah. so then I could buy me a foil. Yay, but no. Uh, we have Duress, which is still a fine card against the uh, against control decks mainly. You know, you don't want to bring it in versus aggro decks because you're just going to feel bad when they show you a hand of like all guys that are going to smash you. I actually, I, if the, if Thoughtseize did come back, um, just for the in the here and the now for me playing Magic, I would not want it in in M14. I'd rather have it in Theros if they did reprint it. I don't think mm -hmm. they will, mm -hmm. but like I wouldn't want it to be with Snapcaster Mage. I also don't like cards like Thoughtseize in extremely powerful formats. Or just in general, I don't think it's a good card to print because we saw what it did to Magic. It's so good right now. It like was a one mana answer to everything. Right. And you just didn't get to play Magic. So you you open seven cards, and now with how Magic cards are designed, you have a lot of variants pump in because you have to interact and kill people so early in the game compared mm -hmm. to before. Right. Um, you could go longer in games. But so if they take your one card that like is your key to your hand, the game's over. So Thoughtseize is better when you used to have games that lasted until turns 9, 10, 11, 12. But with games now ending on 5, 6, 7, a Thoughtseize can just win the game. I mean, it's, it's possible. I think for me, Thoughtseize is obviously value, obviously great, and would become, like, Thoughtseize is a card that they put in sets to sell the set. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I can see it being one of the blocks, one of the, uh, one of the sets of Theros because, you know, like, Journey into Nyx, right, is Journey into Night. Nyx is yeah. Greek for Night. And so, like, you know, that's, that's like, a, maybe it has more black cards in it, and that's where I would throw in a thought seize, right? Mm -hmm. Like, it's, go, it's still, I agree with you, it's just going to be one of the best cards in Standard. It was designed to be. It was designed to be a terrific card um, for its time, and it's, it was, and it remains, and they can't really improve on it. So they can no. either reprint it or not, and here we are. The rest, eh. It's, you know, it has constructed possibilities in the sideboard, I mean, as I, it always I, has. I've been playing the rest a lot. I just, like, in Miami, I was playing it. <laughs> yeah. And, and so there's, you know, it's a great card, and for limited, you, you kind of bring it in. You don't main deck it, but you can bring it in versus, like, you know, a slow control deck that has some spell that you can't deal with. So, it's a thing. There's a Newt. I don't Investors. know. What does this card do? <laughs> does things. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but it gets minus four, minus four if you got that witch. Yeah. Boom, boom. It's so sweet. I actually think this card's awesome. Like, it, it just seems fun. Like, on its own, it's a fine early creature, especially with so many, like, X1s that are in the format, like mm -hmm. the Flyers, like a lot of them are X1, a lot of the more powerful cards uh, that, that can really do a lot of damage racing have mm -hmm. one toughness, so this card can deal with them, but whenever you have the combo, like negative four, negative four is a big deal. That's, That's a, a huge lot. Deal. That yeah. kills almost everything. Yep. And, you know, to have a Festering Goblin that just has upside, you know, mm -hmm. like there's a Goblin, but here's the Newt, and the Newt is sweet. Yep. Because the Newt works with its Witch, and that's awesome. So by itself, it's a pretty playable card. Mm -hmm. Even if you don't have the witch, it's still a fine man. It's still a festering goblin. No one wants to block it with their two toughness yep. creatures because they're going to lose it. Um, but when you have the combo, whoa, whoa, whoa. no one's going to block it ever at that point. Yeah, <laughs> so you know, <coughs> they're going to wait for you to um, to draw the cauldron or whatever, or sack to get the cauldron. Right. 
in order to get there because and and once you do that, you know, you're already killing things. Yep. So yeah, this this is one of those cards that if you're in black or if you want to play the mono black deck, you go sort of all in on the festering newts. Yeah. They're they're a sweet one. Um, but just to go back real fast, no constructed. No. Yes, constructed. Trading post. <laughs> Nine zombie. Hang, hang, yeah. hang, hang, hang. Yeah, this this card is kind of cool. Like, it, it it reminds me of you know something you can do with blood artists that it doesn't have to be there. But I I like that in the zombie shell like that we have. You know, we have the grave crawlers and the diagraph ghouls mm -hmm. and the dross messengers. We don't have a good defensive two drop, which is actually what was really important for the deck. Like, it couldn't hmm. really d defend at all. Right. And this guy does that. He blocks voice resurgence tokens. He blocks uh, early like. Um, Rakdos hmm. Cacklers and things like that. Right. And then in the in the mid to late game, that ability is relevant. Now, it's not a Blood Artist ability, but Blood Artist has to, has to have an entire deck built around it where this guy can just go into a zombie strategy mm -hmm. and, and sacrifice a messenger and drain them for one and then drain them for two or sacrifice a Gravecrawler, bring the Gravecrawler back, say go. Like it has little implications, but defending in the early turns I think is really important and, and that's what this guy can do. So I, I actually think this card could make a zombie deck actually playable. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I think Life Bane Zombie actually makes the zombie deck playable, but I because for me I would just like completely written this card off and I was like, yeah. this card's not gonna do anything <laughs> blah blah blah. And then like oh, two mana one three, it kinda stops like Burning Tree Emissary and another random door. Now just think of if you took all the text away from it and just made it flying. It would be bad. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but for limited, how good is it? Uh, I think this is a pretty decent limited card. Like, I, I don't mind 1-3s. I compare them to 2-2s. Two but because this card has a mana sync ability, mm -hmm. has uh, a combo with another uncommon that we'll get to, mm -hmm. and can just drain people out of nowhere. Like, that's what Blood Artist does. Like, if anyone's played standard, Blood Artist is the kind of card that you sacrifice all your resources to kill them right now, right here. Mm -hmm. And this is what 9 Zombie can do, too. If their life total ever hits the amount of creatures that you have in play, he can sacrifice himself. So if you if they ever hit four and you have four creatures, eight mana they're dead. Right, and there was, your issue, I guess, is that blood artists stacked in ways that this does not stack. That's true. You can't have two of these, but like right. limited's a different monster. It, yeah, it's a totally different monster. Don't get me wrong. It was just that you know watching yourself play over the weekend in Miami and watching other people play blood artists. You know, normally when the second blood artist hit, it was just game over. Yeah, like this. You know, the clock was ticking mm -hmm. really fast. Whereas for nine zombie, like you draw a second nine zombie, you kind of feel bad about having the first one on the field yeah. at that point. But you know, if you're if you're the zombie deck and you need something to stop the initial onslaught, this will stop an onslaught, yep. and it will stop you know things like reckoner from getting you mm -hmm. when you can sack the uh, the blockers they have. So grim return is a card that I am just have no idea how good it how good it is or is not right now. Yeah, I, I really was hoping when we got to this card that you had one of your Evan Irwin spiels, but because uh, I don't really know either. Like this card could be really good, it could be really bad. <laughs> like <laughs> I pre ordered a copy, uh, a full <laughs> copy for my cube. I don't know. I mean, you know, once upon a time I, I pre ordered Boros Reckoner for six dollars and that turned out okay. So like Grim Return could be fantastic, could be absolutely terrible. I, it is 100% unknown for me right yeah. now. I got nothing. I got, I got potential. I know it's got potential. I know there's scenarios in which it would be amazing, and I know there's similar scenarios in which it would be terrible, and it would be, you know, you tapped out for blah, and then they just kill everything, and then you're like, Grim Return does nothing. So, you know, that's, that, yeah. there's a lot of sadness that can go on the stack with this card. Um, I don't know if anyone else does this. I don't know if this is going to be constructed playable, but there's, there's always plays when I look through sets that I'm like, I want to do that. <laughs> like, that's something I want to do. Yeah. And the thing I want to do is we'll get to the removal spell, but there's a 5 mana removal that destroys a creature and adds 3 black to your pool for, like, no reason. Right. And I just want to kill a guy and then gr and use then that mana to Grim Return it. Yeah. Like, Sweet. on turn 5, I just want to kill, Grim Return, go. You know, there's this weird thing that they try to do in Magic Art every once in a while, and they try to sort of ex tell you a story or show you multiple versions of the character. And it's really interesting that, you know, like, this Grim Return is actually that... That woman three times where yeah. she's stabbed, and then she literally pulls it out of herself, yeah. and then she carries the sword <laughs> and will beat you to death yeah. with it. That's pretty <laughs> sweet. The, mm -hmm. I don't know if I, I'll be honest. Until I took a longer look at it, I kind of thought it was three different characters. You know, it was three mm -hmm. different people in different phases where it's actually the same. Mm -hmm. So they, you know, they, they try to tell a story as much as they can, and I think they actually did a really good job with it. Oh, for once, sure. Yeah. Once you check it out, but yeah, Grim Return. 
This is going to be a card that, all right, I'm going to fall on the side of it is not that good. I, I'm, I am too. Uh, I mean, if we, I, we got to go somewhere. We, we've had, we've had, good or bad. we've had cards like this. Like one specifically is like Faith's Reward. Now I know it's not the same as Faith's Reward, sure. but it, it's under it's the pretty kind similar. Of, yeah. And Faith's Reward was bad. Except that, for that one time that it won a Pro Tour. Except that, that one time when it was in a weird combo deck, and then they had yeah. to, you know, ban Band. things. But yeah, Grim Return for me. Mm. Is it any good in limited? Yeah. Seems really good. Like, you, you know, this is the trading thing. You're bashing, you're trading. They, they trade their death touch mm -hmm. thing for your big monster, and then you just grim return your best thing. And there yep. you are. Or vice versa. Like, right. it's just, it's just going to do some cool things. It's just um, a trick, essentially. Yeah, and if they ever tap out to kill one of your guys to attack you, then you can bring it back, restoration mm -hmm. style block. Right. So, I, yeah, I mean, there's times where your opponent's going to be like, you know, Doomblade that, blah, and mm -hmm. you go, okay, grim return it back and break your face. Mm -hmm. You know, it's bad. So. That, that's that's a good thing. So it, it'll be very good there. And you can pick it early. Now, this card, Life Bane Zombie, yes, wait. This is like your favorite card, isn't it? Oh, oh, Imposing Sovereign is my favorite card. Now, Life Bane Zombie is my okay, second sure. favorite card because it just gets all the things that the zombie deck can't deal with. Angel Serenity, get out of here. Restoration Angel, go away. Obsidat, for God's sake, go away. Like These are cards that zombies care about? Well, I mean, you know, like, well, Angel Serenity is a thing. Thragtus is a yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, Huntmaster is a thing. Um, you know, like I mean, it actually uh, Oli just uh, not Olivia. Uh, Gore Clan Rampager's a thing. It really just uh, takes care of everything. Like I actually, I, I do agree. Like I'm just giving you a hard time. I think this card sure. is very good, mm -hmm. and I think it goes really well in a zombie-based deck. Um, it gives the deck another three drop where it just had Messenger before, and all the right. other three drops were bad. And the ability to just pluck a spell out of their hand, especially like after sideboard. Like the cool thing that this card can do is, uh, let's say we're playing against Jund. We can get their Scavenger Uses, their Huntmaster. I think Scavenger Uses is going to be a Jun card. I don't know. I think so. Sure. But Scavenger News, Jun, or Huntmaster, Thrag Tusk, it picks off any of those other, other hands. Right. But if you add in Appetite for Brains, now all of a sudden, like, you got two of their initial seven cards. Right. Same thing with, like, other aggressive decks. You can duress them or Appetite them, a as well as Life Pains. I'm getting two cards uh, and getting the three one puts you really far ahead. And I can also see you running a, you know, a, a Mana Accelerator, you know, like, Turn one overgrown tomb into Elvish Mystic, and then you play another black source into Life Bane. Now, now you're just now you're just being crazy. Now you're just crazy. You're being way no, too crazy. Calm, so calm yourself. No, I'm doing it. We're going all the way. That and that, that lets me get their burning tree. I'm serious. They're doing it. <laughs> Shut up, Brad. <laughs> Seriously, card is sick. It's sweet. It's actually. Uh, I mean, the fact that it's a 3 1 Intimidate, like, oh, it's so good. Especially it's in not standard. Not like I can whiff. You know what I mean? Like, in standard, it's yeah. going to be great because even if it's like a late game top deck, it still has evasion. And that's. Sweet. Yeah, I mean, it has evasion. It can take care of a lot of. Ex like, think of just every deck that runs creatures is, even if it doesn't tap any mana for green or white, has green and white creatures in it. Like, that's just a thing that exists. Right. The fact that this won't be a complete blank versus mono red, mm -hmm. like. That's awesome. That's a thing, you know. It like actually I will hits, take your record. It, it actually hits twelve of their cards, though. Right. And it's Gore Clans and mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. and Burning Trees and and Forest Reckoners. Like it's unbelievable. Like how it's many cards? It's really it sweet. Takes. I mean, like even when you get rid of like a Blood Baron, you know, yeah. like this card solves a lot of problems. It's just bad in the mirror. That's the only place it's really bad. Yep. I mean, you'll sideboard down the mirror. Okay. Yep. Uh, in limited, it's actually a little worse. This is sort of a card that's built for constructed. Mm -hmm. um, it's good in limited. Don't get me wrong. A three one for Three when intimidates great. Um, it's just you know like the the exile effect is going to be mm -hmm. rarer. Every once in a while you're going to be able to get like the sweet full value and it's going to be amazing. But at the same time, if you're in black, you want this card. Yeah, I agree. It, it, the evasion is really good. Yeah. So I mean, it it being not as good and limited doesn't stop yeah. it from being awesome. Mm -hmm. It's just not as good and limited. <laughs> Still first pick. It absolutely yeah. is. Uh, and for value, if nothing else, mm -hmm. uh, Liliana of the Dark Realms. One more year trying to get this one into play, not going to happen. It just can't protect itself. It kills itself if it tries to protect Man. itself. I mean, you know, I think you always want the Planeswalkers to be good. You always want them to be good. You always want them to be playable. I mean, once, ever, ever since we've entered the realm of Planeswalker magic, ever since mm -hmm. Lorman came out, you know, and people loved Planeswalkers, you know, with their heart and their soul, uh, you know, whenever a Planeswalker comes out, People want Liliana to be good, and Liliana the Veil was amazing, and then Dark Realms not so much. So I will give Dark Realm I will give Dark Realms a pass because the Veil is good, and then we'll get to Chandra later, and then then, then we will. And then I, I will actually, give no more passes. 
for 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 how magic works right now, like we watch a lot of it, right? Like, I mean, Miami had what fifteen thousand people watching. Like, it's people are starting to view it a lot and like sure. watch and they enjoy streaming. They enjoy watching the playset test videos. And where I'm going with this is, planeswalkers actually try like make bad games. They like have these snowball effects on games. If they're too good, and yes. that's just it. And I, I'm very I'm glad that planeswalkers aren't good because every season that I played where Planeswalkers were what you were supposed to do, mm -hmm. they were just boring. It was like the, the Super Friends decks and Kago and Ka and, and, and sure. uh, Coblade or whatever. Like right. Those decks there were just overpowered. I didn't like them. I think you can get to a, a, uh, an extreme, as it yeah. were, where if there's too many good Planeswalkers, like Super Friends was a thing, where you could run uh, Gideon and Jace and uh, Chandra Ajani. Nalar and Ajani, uh, Ajani Vengeant. Um, which is way better than Johnny Goldmane. Uh, you know, w once you had sort of like that much, you know, this this little sort of iteration of like little tiny effects that when you have a whole swath of them become like a, a free spell, a really good free or two spell. Two or three time. spells. Yes, every single turn, like that that type of iterative advantage is not something you want to promote. So no. I get that there is a slippery slope with too many good planeswalkers. And then the fanboy in me says, I just want good planeswalkers. I mean, I want very good fringe planeswalkers. Like I. Like, the Planeswalkers I want um, are not ones that they could put in core sets, but they don't work well with others, like Tezzerets and, yeah. and things like that. Like where they Those are cool. Little, yeah. very niche Planeswalkers almost. Yeah, and they and figured... And both Tezzerets were that way. And, well, they figured out Tezzeret, but they really haven't figured out a lot more since then. That, like, they really haven't dived into that type of thing, but I don't even know where they can go with it. Right. I mean, they, I think they went close with uh, Koth, you know, in terms of, like, what mm -hmm. Koth does. He's this part of Planeswalker. You need basic mountains to be able to use his abilities, blah, blah, blah. Um, Liliana... Honestly, just needed an extra point of loyalty. If oh, she, she needed a lot more. If she, well, that. But I mean, but if she was for loyalty, you'd be able to kill something and not have her die. That's true. Yeah. You know, it wouldn't just be a four mana removal spell anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, and in limited, she's fantastic. I mean, just like every other planeswalker, you're going to plus one her and then go like get you know another swamp and just get card advantage mm -hmm. out of her, kill that thing, go get swamps, kill that thing, or plus one for the alpha yeah. or plus X plus X for the alpha, like you know. It's there's there's options there. So again, it's not also, a bad card in, in limited. Just also, ultimate is just terrible. Like, it's just not that exciting at all. Like like both the other Lilianas have like sweet, very unique abilities. Hers is just like you got mana. Hope you got something to do with it. Yeah, there's no drain lifes and you know whatever. So this is awkward, guys. Like, wouldn't it be sweeter if she got an emblem that just said that you can tap a swamp to siphon them? I mean, it's like practically Koth. It's better than Koth. It would be way better than Koth. But it's still sweet. It would be. I mean, don't get me started on the Chandra Power Master ultimate we'll talk about it later. All right, to move on here, Liliana, meh, and constructed and good and limited. Meh and limited. Not bad and limited. Meh. But her Reaver? Her, her Reaver's, Reaver's sweet. sweet. Yeah. <laughs> her Reaver's sweet. This is a new card, and... Uh, and, and I like it, you know, like the ability to bash in that has three toughness, which is sort of its downfall. Mm -hmm. And the reason that it's not completely overpowered, you wouldn't want this to be a 4-4. Four, four, no. That whenever it dealt damage, you got a 2-2. Two, two, like, that would be crazy. Well, it's not just uh, that. It's like that it hits their hand, too. Right. Like that's, this, is, this card's good. And, and I feel like you're going to get a lot of 2-for-1s because if they don't have a 3-3, three, three, like... They're going to 2-for-1 for one. They're for going this. to 2-for-1 themselves because it's really good. You have to stop this card. It is super awesome and limited. Um... First pick? Yeah. yeah, because it just runs away with a game. Like, if you can it's play it and insane. kill a guy, yeah. You play it, kill a guy, you run away with the game. You get a 2 2, they discard a card. All of a sudden, they have two guys they try to block again. If you have a Doom Blade or if you have another removal spell, you just get to just do anything you want. I think this card's very powerful. It trades up. It's just a 4 3 death touch. Like, you're, you're paying a premium for a death touch creature. This is the card I want with the Condor. Yeah. And that's going to give it flying, you know? Like, whoof. <laughs> Up we go. Hit you. Card. Zombie. Thanks. Go. Or a quarter shield even. Yeah. That'd be quarter pretty shield sweet too. Be fantastic. A 4-6 that has that yep. you know, amazing ability on top of it. Absolutely. So this card, I was like, oh my god, oh my god, this card's so amazing. It's going to be amazing. Get struck. Nope. Because I saw the power where, toughness. Where do you, how, do you, how do you read cards from top to bottom? I'm talked about bottom. I see this. I see the cost. And then I'll start. Well, it depends on the cards. You know, yeah. Most of the time I'll go name, cost, power, and toughness. And then I'll read what it does. Oh, I always go power and toughness, cost, and then text. I, I don't even know any of the names right away. Well, I mean, you know, it, it, I've gotten to this point where, like, it's so about opening a present. Yeah. You know, I try to, like, 
I try to savor it, you know, mm -hmm. and realize I gotta go here and then go there, and I like slowly, like even when I get my spoilers, yeah. like my my magic show spoilers, like I get them, like you know, you know, there's that moment, there's that magical moment well, before I open yeah. up the image. That's a beautiful time, and so when I first read it, I try to like just take it in bits and pieces so I can absorb all of it. Well, if yeah, if if I got if I got a spoiler, I would do that too. Like yeah. that's one of the things. Like when I open packs, I always. I always open from the bottom, so I see the bottom of the rare. I, haven't, I don't look through any other pack, but I open the bottom of the rare, and I just get the tip of the power and toughness, and then I try to guess what it is. Mm -hmm. And most of the time, if it's like green, and I see a 2-2, two -two, and I'm just like, Skylash or again, oh, you know? But yeah. But anyway, Liliana's Reaver is sweet, but it won't see any constructive play. Here's mm -hmm. my removal spell. L liturgy. Liturgy or liturgy? You're trying to ask me about it. From hey, man. I'm from the South. Leave me alone. Um, Liturgy of Blood is what I'm gonna call it. Uh, this is a sweet one. Yeah, and this is this is the removal spell to go Grim with return it. Return and whatnot. Yeah, yep. pretty sweet. It's, and un it's unique that there's a there's a, a, a ritual effect in a black removal spell. I, I I never really I don't really get why, but I think they're trying to explain it in the in the art, which is like yeah. they you sort of you killed it, and when you did, you sort of punctured it, and the mana's leaking out or something. I don't know. But at the end of the day, it's five mana to store a target creature. You will play it in black. Yeah. You will pick it beyond bombs. It will be great. It won't see any playing constructed because the, its effect is not powerful enough. And if you don't have anything to do with the mana, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't. There's no There's mana no burn. There's no mana burn left. No mana burn, so nobody cares. And if you weren't around for that, it used to cost you life points when you had mana in your mana pool and you had to keep going to the next phase. And that was bad. It was annoying. It was, there, there it was, was really annoying. Yeah, especially when you had to play against mana flare type effects and you forgot. And you like played, I mean, even back mm -hmm. in the day with Cube, you would mana drain something mm -hmm. and it would add, you know, six colorless mana or whatever to your pool. And if you didn't have something to sink it into, you just take six damage. Yep. So, in a way, it, it balanced things, but in another way, it was just a big giant mm -hmm. feel bad for no reason. So, again, five mana destroy target creature is always going to be good. Mark of the Vampire, that's a powerful enchantment. It is a, this is an extreme powerful enchantment. This is the, the centerpiece of your Oromancer black white enchantment deck. Mm. But I also have to say, the coolest thing I've ever seen this strapped onto was a Predator Ooze. <laughs> that was some cool beats. Wow. Yeah. It's it bigger and bigger and bigger yep. and bigger and you die. Yeah. <laughs> but awesome. no, it's a very good enchantment. I think uh, you could see the sideboard of a Predator Ooze deck in standard. That's about the only place that I would see this card. Thank you, since Unflishing you. Courage is just better. Yeah. Um, but in limited, you want it in the black white Oromancer deck. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, I mean, even if you don't have the black white Oromancer deck, like as as a value card, you know, it's not something you run two or three of in that regard, unless you are the black white, uh, you know, Aura deck. But you know, when it's good, it's if it doesn't good. die, you win. Yep, there you go. But it don't something to intimidate. Yep. for the full values, it's good. Don't pick it super highly though. No, it's not a card you have to really fight for. Six to ten. Yeah, you'll probably wheel it no problem. Uh, Mine Rod is awesome and sealed. Unbelievable sealed, pretty decent in draft, and it's one of the cards that I love week one. Now, you know, for the pre release and the release events, mm -hmm. I love Mine Rods because uh, in draft, like, you can just take the draw because you don't, no one really knows how aggressive the formats are right away. Right. No one really knows how the interactions go. So I just take the draw all the time, and I always just take the, take the extra card, and Mine Rod is so good when you're going to do that. So right. I'm just like, Trying to abuse people. It's a little too spiky. Don't take that to your local card shops and, and, and you know, <laughs> it's a little rude and spiky, but. I mean, at the end of the day, we're, we both are spiky. He's just better yeah. at magic than I am. And, you know, I, I, do, I do still want to win, and I, I, will, I will run that because, like, for me, the game is about winning. And, yeah. um, you know, having fun, huge, awesome things, Timmy-like, and then winning because I'm, I'm a spike. And so Mind Rot is a card that you can get people with. Um, that you start on the draw for it, like in sealed, it's terrific because yep. you sealed often gets down to they're they're holding two pieces of removal or they're holding like some bomb they can't cast and something else, and then mine rock gets it. So you know, you're or, able to sort of surprise them in that regard. I mean, it's also I, I even turn three mine rock into player. Like think about this: if you're on the play and you cap, and on your turn uh, three, you you knew you played a card, right? So now you're sitting at like five cards in hand, they mine rock you. You don't know if you're supposed to discard your lands, your five drops, or removal. Like, that's what your hand is. You have, like, a bigger spell that if you discard all your lands, you can't cast. If you discard that, you have lands that are extra. And then you have these removal spells. So it's, like, really difficult to make those decisions. And a lot of them are just kind of, like, up in the air. Like, sometimes it's right, sometimes it's wrong. Right. Like, and if you, you choose poorly. Yeah, you don't have to try to get their best cards out of their hand. It's, it's fine to just get two. Right. Like, it's just a card advantage spell. 
Absolutely. It's also one of those where um, you're giving your opponent the chance to screw up. Yep. And often they will. Yep. And that's that's some of magic right there. Uh, I wouldn't in draft. You don't really pick it highly. Mine rod is a card that usually goes late. Sometimes it, super it's late. It's much better in sealed than draft. Right. I mean, it's an all star in sealed. You play yeah. almost every copy you have. Play every copy you have. Yeah. But in draft, you can hold off. It's fine. Mm -hmm. The Minotaur Abomination. I like this because isn't there just like a different Minotaur that's like two of these? Yeah, it's, it's like coming a, up, right? Uh, I think so. It's like a two-three Minotaur, and so they took the two-three Minotaur and the two-three Minotaur and, and sewn they, them together. And, and it's actually what they are. Yeah, literally stitched together Minotaurs yeah. <laughs> into a four-six. I mean, one of the ways that they wanted to differentiate red from black is that black has higher toughness, mm -hmm. and so you see that here, where this is Crawworm mana, six mana. Mm -hmm. For a 4-6 in black, where, where it would be a 6-4 in green, or it could be a 6-4 with haste or something in red, um, but, but here it's just good old-fashioned vanilla. Yep. And as such, it's pretty high up on the chain, so I don't, you don't pick it highly. You don't want to run a bunch of them. Maybe one. It's fine. It's, it's, like, it's fine if it's on the curve. It's also, it's decent if you have a decent amount of removal and you like the enchantment deck might just need a finisher. So like, right. I consider this good when you have a lot of removal, but don't think that this card is going to fight other creatures that well. Yeah. Like not super late in the game. Right, super late in the game. I mean, yes, you want to like market the vampire this thing and go crazy with a six eight, but by then you've probably already played your mark of the vampire and you're in top deck mode and you're like slamming down a four six and it's okay, but it's not it's not a super game winner, but it is a way to end the game. Yep. Nightmare. This is a card that new players love. This is also a card that would make the mono black deck work, and I would be I would be shocked if people uh, if new players were not astounded by how cool this card is because I know I was. Oh yeah, I mean it's it's it's, a, it's an interesting card. It's very good in in the drafts where you want to be the mono black deck because it is very powerful in that deck. Obviously, since you're all swamp, so it's a six six for six flyer and it gets to become a seven seven next turn. But like every time I just see this card, I just think a bad horse from. From, uh, um, from uh, online. No, Dr. Horrible Sing Along Bug. Aha. Yeah, bad horse, bad horse, bad horse, bad horse. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it is a nightmare horse. Exactly, yeah. Which is awesome, by the way. Fantastic <laughs> creature type. <laughs> Terrible and constructed. It's been bad and constructed for like 15 years now. But in limited, if, you know, it's a good man. Even at like a 3-3, three, 4-4 three, four, four flyer. It's fine. Yeah, I mean, it's not terrible to play in other colors. It's obviously best in a mono black deck, but I think, like, kind of like the blue decks are going to be like 10 islands, 7 or something else. That's what the black decks right. look like they're going to be. They're going to be like 10 swamps, 7, or 11 swamps, 6. Like. Right, and that's the, that's the deck you want to run this in. You don't yeah. splash for Nightmare. <laughs> I got a 1-1. One, one. Yeah, woo, got that flying doo-doo. Like, come and get some. It's bad. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, but, yeah, and, and in that regard, you don't have to pick it highly. It's, no. not, it's not a card that people are going to fight for. It's a card you can get late, particularly if you're the mono black drafter, because no one, again, wants to splash mm -hmm. for like a 3-3 three, three flyer for 6. That's a lot. And that's, if, that's on the good side. You know, that's mm -hmm. if you get lucky. So, Fine Man, Nightwing Shade, Finer Man. This is like the fixed shade. This is like the multicolor shade. Now, <laughs> I know there isn't a different color, but all shades are always just black plus 1 plus 1. Right. And uh, this one at least like... It's a fixed version of a shade because it's not as good because it has flying, but it just feels better that I know I can sync other colors into it. Sure, you can use two colors in order to pump, pump it yeah. the one time, but it's pumping the one time that you know they kind of slowed it down. Mm -hmm. They kind of put their foot off the gas a little bit when in terms of evasive, uh, you know, a, a base, a, evasive shades as it were, um, because you know even though it looks really expensive, five minute two two flyer. Like, that's, it can get out of hand really quickly. Well, it, it's your mana sink, and that's one of the most important things about Limited is having something to do with when you're flooding. Right. Uh, because that's just part of the game, especially in Limited, where the games will go longer than they do in Constructed, and your ratio of lands is the same as Constructed and most, mo for the most part. So when you draw two or three extra lands, you want to do something with them. And so uh, just having any way to sink, and that's, that's one of the reasons why Guild Mages and Return to Ravnica block mm. were so powerful, is because you always had something to do with your mana. And that's where shade comes in. Yeah, and, th and there's, sorts, there's, there's cards like this in every color where they want to give you something to do, and this is something to do. Don't pick it highly. Won't hit constructed. Will be good and limited, but won't be great and limited. Will be, will be fine. Yeah. Won't be, won't, he won't be your all-star, but he will be very good. Now, Quag Cygnus? No, Quag. Good old Quag. So giggity, qu giggity. Giggity, hey. So, uh, <laughs> 
So the <laughs> quagmire sickness, as we'll yeah. call it, uh, <laughs> does give minus one for each swamp. You can, you know, you don't need a ton of swamps for this thing to be valuable. No. It, obviously, if you're the mono black deck, you're, go you're going to high five. But if you're the blue black deck, you still want it. You know, if you're the black oh, yeah. white deck, you still want it. If you're the black, you know, if you're anything in black, you want a quag sickness because it kills things. I, I think the limit is eight swamps, but usually you're be able, you'll, you should be flexible enough to be able to play nine swamps, eight of your other color. Mm -hmm. But like, as long as you have like eight or nine swamps in your deck, it's fine to play because think like, odds are on um, when you have four mana, you should have two swamps and three mana to kill a two toughness creature is enough. Right. Especially like you, you don't even have to kill like you can put on a four four. Yeah, you can just make them small. You can yep. make, you know, a 2-3-0-1, and oh one, and, you know, if they block and they die or whatever, you still won for one them, and that's okay, because that's what you draw a swamp for. instead. Yep, exactly. That's yep. the best part, actually, mm -hmm. is when, you know, they were able to do some shenanigans or let it live, and then you're like, eh, mm -hmm. swamp, kill it. You know, just instantly it dies. Yep. So, that's sweet. Good removal spell. Pick it highly, as you would in any other removal spell, as long as you're in black, of course, and, um, yeah, we don't see it in constructed decks. You ever wonder what Liliana Vess's ultimate cost should be it should be nine it's nine mana i guess her ultimate's nine her ultimate is nine mana in, entire and you just put all the creatures on the battlefield is this playable and sealed i want to say yes but i, I want to say i need green acceleration of some sort I, I would say just not even close no no i don't know about that if nine I got, mana if i got a dark stealing got if i got elvish mystic you know like you know, work with me here. If I got some acceleration, like, there has to be things in place. You can't just say, you play this and seal. Like, I get that. Uh, yeah. But what I'm saying is, if you got some acceleration and you got some enablers, so d does that change things? No. Uh, it doesn't change anything. Because, Come on. Right, so, I just want to, I'm going to use standard as a test right now, okay? We're going to use standard as a test. Why would you use standard? But just, just hear me out. All right. In standard, where, if you had to find a break of, a uh, castable converted mana cost compared to none, none. Where is that break at? Like, how high does the mana curve stop right now? Like, w you see playable cards in this converted mana cost, but not in this. Uh, seven, you see it, and eight, you don't. Okay, I was gonna. Seven is Angel of Serenity. Okay, I was. That that's technically fine, but you also could. W where I'm actually going is five, you see, six, you don't, because you're actually on bare rights in Angel of Serenity. That's like your cheat in. You can hard cast it, but you're also sometimes cheating it. Right. But it's possible, but I have hard cast it. Oh, yeah, it's fine to hard cast it, but that's like the only seven, right? Right. And there's very few sixes. That's like, Almost right. none. And, and, and the reason why is how I've, I've started to, like, discover this as I play Magic is the, how fast a form it is is how high of a converted mana cost you can get. And in standard, it's very aggressive. So, like, it's reasonable to have the resources to cast a five drop and have the five drop in your hand and cast it and still live. Mm -hmm. It's reasonable to draw five lands and a Thunder Mahal Kite out of your first, like, ten cards mm -hmm. and still be fine. But it's not reasonable, really, to draw six lands and, a, a, and something that costs six. Mm -hmm. Usually, that's costing you too many resources. You're not being able to defend yourself. You're dying before that happens. Okay. And in limited, I, I don't think nine has ever been in that realm. I think, like, eight sometimes pushes it. Seven's the, you, the break. Like, you seven can play really seven. Seven is the break. Yeah, you can play seven drops and you're fine, but... To be able to actually, it, like, still be alive by the time you have nine lands and a nine drop, it's going to happen a few times, and it's only going to happen when both players flood. And when both players flood, sure, that's going to win you some games. But for the most part, it's not going to come up that often. Makes me sad. That was the first time. That was the first time I unleashed that whole argument. Was it all right? Did it make sense? Okay, I've, ne I've never actually said that before. Crushed my dreams. Well, good. I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> Sanguine Bond is reprinted. And Did it just come out? I uh, don't think so. I want to say this card was... Ooh, uh, I, for some reason I'm thinking Rise oh, of yeah, Eldrazi, but, the, but The opposite. Old. We actually have two five-man enchantments at Info, right? Infinite now? Uh, was the other like one? The, the other one was from M13. It says whenever an opponent loses life, you gain life. Yes. So now if you just, it's the combo, it's the, <laughs> except you don't have the guild, guild mage, you just can have two enchantments, and if you have both of them play. gain or lose at any point in time, and then Yeah, and then they're just dead. That's nice. That yeah. seems like something fun I should do. <laughs> so with Sanguine Bond, uh, this is a very popular casual card, because, you know, you want to play it and then start gaining life every turn, mm -hmm. and then making them, you know, lose life every turn, and blah, blah, blah. So uh, in Constructed, it's never gone anywhere. In Limited, it's never gotten anywhere. 
But if you are able to build a deck, this <coughs> is, this is <coughs> it has gotten somewhat limited. I've won a two eight, had a giant draft with this strategy before. We'd go. We had two Sigma Bonds, a tutor, all the Lucky Charms, and Angel's Mercy, and we won. Okay, so if you have two Sanguine Bonds in your pool, it has to be two at a giant and two at a giant. And Angel's Mercy doesn't exist. Are we all done here now? Yeah, we're done. We're, we're done. done. Okay, great. Because there was that one time when I cast the Liliana, you know, what, what was it, Rise of the Dark Realms? Yeah, yeah. I cast that once and won the game because I got flooded and cast Planar Cleansing and then... I feel like know. if I know Evan one more time, he's going to be bringing someone else in for bread. Mm -hmm. Singer Vampire, a man that has been with us since the very beginning of the magic. Well, that's because he's a vampire and he never dies. I saw what you did there. Okay. Also... A card that was deemed too powerful for a while. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Uh, Sarah Angel was deemed too powerful for a while. Same reason. You know, five mana, four four flyer was just like Whoa, two buddy. out there, guys. <laughs> Chill out. Let's 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 calm these creatures down and start printing cards like I Tinker. Just, you know, <laughs> I I wonder if like you can take some of the creatures today, stuff like I mean Geist and stuff like Huntmaster, and just travel back in time and show the original designers these cards and have them laugh their butt off Same with like how do. how good they are. Like really, like. He just does this for that, the three mana four four that has an upside. Like what? No, and then they're gonna be like, yeah, that's not even good because we're just gonna tinker donate or whatever. Oh like, no, no, I mean like back in the day. I mean like oh, way back. And they're gonna be like, well, these moxes seem good, and we're like, yeah, those are busted, but you know, everything else is bad. All yeah. the creatures <laughs> are bad. So you know, wood elemental and all that. So regardless, singer vampire unlimited is an all star, just like Sarah Angel. Mm -hmm. You know, this is the black Sarah Angel, as it were, and just like you want all those. You want all of these. Heads up. Which one do you take? Uh, Sarah Angel. Because I want Vigilance. I want her to be able to stay back yeah. on D. And I like White's Flyers more than I like Black's Flyers. I agree. Uh, so there you go. <laughs> Whoa. Whew. Got there. Pass the test, man. Thanks, bro. Whew. Feeling good. <laughs> Feeling good. Not being terrible at magic. All right. Okay. All right. So, <laughs> Singer Vampire is good. It's a fine man. And yeah. second ability, honestly, is pretty blank. Yeah, it doesn't your, really happen. Your opponent is not going to let you do that. You have to trick them into making that happen. Like, you know, attack something with a high toughness that blocked and then, like, quag sickness it. Yeah. And then he'll get a counter. Like, that's or, just, or just not worth it. Or sneak in an Umamol tracker into your deck and just start fighting things. Woo! Fight bear. I mean, fight it's bear, new bear. players show up at pre releases. They're not going to know oh, if you're bringing in cards. Sake. Regardless, I'm just very I'm good, kidding. obviously. The, the black cards... If you're in black, play Singer Vampire. You'll yep. love it. Shadowborn Apostle. Now, this was an interesting card. I'm going to give this one to you. I think it's sweet. I think it's not good, but I think it's hilarious. I, I do like that it did end up letting Patrick Chapin go on a rant about deck size. It and did like, let Chapin so build a 666-card <laughs> deck. Yeah, so it could be 666, which is great. Yes, yes, um, yes. But yeah, I mean, it, it did make sense mathematically. It was kind of cool. Like, I think he it was actually an interesting broke, read. I think he actually broke our deck database at the time. Oh, really? Because you couldn't do a deck with like 400 cards in it. <laughs> it just like cracked and got the numbers wrong or something. That's I can't hilarious. remember. You know, like no one had ever ran more than 99 copies of a card before. And yeah. it was just like, <laughs> it just wigged out. Regardless. <laughs> Um, you know, a deck can have any number of cards named this, which is cool. All mm -hmm. of a sudden, every Relentless Rats player has something else to collect. And every Relentless Rat, by the way, is worth a dollar at least, which is insane. Because, really? Yes, because people love that card. Wow. They love Relentless Rats, and that's awesome. And I, I hope they love Shadowborn Apostle. You know, if you're actually looking for constructed applications, you know, people have had um, Reaper from the Abyss in there. They've obviously had Gristle Brand in there. Um, and they've had some other uh, other demons, but I think those are two of the yeah, the biggies. About it. And that's fine. It's just that again, Shadowborn Apostle is the card that you have five of them out, and then you're like, cast my sixth one, and they'll kill one. Yeah. <laughs> and then you'll play it like, oh. and then you'll you'll rip another one, and you'll play, and they'll kill that one that's on the stack. No, I feel it's like, like you're like dragon now. all over again, man. I don't think you're alive by then. No, you shouldn't be. No, they're just messing with you at that point. Yeah. They're just messing with you. So, and, yeah. then, and then they're auto-removal, and they're just tanking, and you're like, it's, it's finally going to resolve. And they're like, fine, Staticaster, kill them all. Oh! <laughs> so good. So, yeah. That's, that's a thing. It's a cool card. It's a cute card. I don't really like it in any of your form. No. It's just not good. It's yeah. a really cool card, though. I like the I like the design. Yeah. Now, Shadowborn Demon is a card that was mentioned in terms of what to go get. Mm -hmm. However, I think this card is super sweet. 
Yeah, I think it is too. Um, especially since it's it's a removal spell. So like, worst comes to worst, you can play it. It blocks for turn. You can just sacrifice it. And it was a five mana removal. That's the worst thing. That's the absolute worst. But and the, for me, it's a five mana five six flyer that kills something that's crazy. Yeah, and and it kills something wow. in turn and sacrifice in your turn and attack is still reasonable. Like it's a one for one. And you're attacking with a 5-6, and at that time you just like sacrifice guys to hit. I'm like, Desecrator Demon stats were outrageous. These are very comparable since you get to destroy a creature. Right. Like I, I'm since you get to com since, you, since you get to kill something when it comes into play, mm -hmm. you are able to sack things that haven't died. Like it does trade with. Oh, we're not everything. talking limited. Oh man, I'm talking construct. I think this card is constructed worthy. You don't think it is? You so cry, bro, for real. That thing is unbelievably sweet. I think it's great. I think you can see constructed play. I don't know if it's going to see construct to play until after Innistrad Block leaves. Probably just too much power there. Yeah. But a five mana five six flyer that kills something, like, jeez, that's huge. I, I would be shocked if it does see construct to play. They honestly, pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed this card, and I think it's it's downside. You know, where the fact late game it's not even going to matter. It's just going to be all upside late game. Like, oh, so good. Six creatures is a lot. Six creatures is a lot, but you know. Lingering Souls is a card. For a while. That is true. For a while. I'm just saying. This this card said all my senses tingling. The first time I saw it on a screenshot from yeah. Duels 2014, I was like, wow, I think this card is awesome. You know, I, I was calling it the Black Bane Slayer, can, can and can I can have I, I'm excited to see it out in the world. I'm sorry I have to ask this, but where's his head? His head is on fire. Is it? But what's his head head then? Well his head head is behind the little mask mask. Oh, that's a mask? Yeah, that's what it looks like to I'm me. so lost with that. I feel like this is a SpongeBob character. Oh, my God. All right, okay, Squidward. Anyway. So, Shrivel has to be a sorcery. It's headness. Yeah, and, and I don't know how great it's going to actually be. Like, if you want to kill token strategies, there's a lot of good I ways to do it. I believe this is from Rise of the Eldrazi, isn't it? It is, yeah. And it's so funny to me, like... They've taken a bunch of Rise of the Eldrazi cards, and they take a bunch of Innistrad cards, also known as like two of the best limited environments of all time, and they, just and they put them. them all together here. And they just took all the core staples. And yeah. Just and just them boom, 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 boom. And that's fine with me. I mean, for what yeah. it's worth, it's great limited formats. This is a card that you have to get really clever with, yeah. or you can just obviously sweep if they have a bunch of X1s. But in the real world, I think it's about getting clever. Yeah. It's about, all right, I attack this way. I think he's going to block with his Pillar Field Ox of my 3-3, three, three, and then I'm able to, yeah. you know, blah, blah, blah. But then you have to trade your 3-3. Three, three. So there, there's a lot we'll of push figure, and pull with this We'll card. figure it out. Yeah, but I definitely do like that there is a decent amount of X1s that you, you will want to board this card in. I don't think you want to take it really early, but... Mm -hmm. uh, um, it's something that can sit in your sideboard, and then you're like, oh, man, they have a lot of those 2-1 blue flyers. I'm mm -hmm. just going to kill them all. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's what you do. Yeah, I mean, this isn't doesn't say all non-flyers get minus one, minus mm -hmm. one. And in terms of pick order, I feel you pick it pretty late. No, it's just your 14th pick. Hopefully that it was, like, you know, 2 your right or whatever. The revolution is not really. Yeah, I mean, it really will come around pretty late. No one, no one really wants this. Even the Black Drafter, after you get, like, you know, one. Maybe two. You probably have two Child of Night, so you're not main decking it. Right, so you don't really want to kill your own stuff. It's a it's a card that requires finesse, and yep. it's not a card that you just like slam down. Yep. Siphon Sliver, get ya. <sighs> Woo! This, this card, card is really good. It looks it, but the so okay. I'm I'm with you on the on the slivers now. He actually looks like an undead sliver. I mean, I can sigh again if you'd like. Please. <sighs> mm. Thanks, Willis. Thanks a lot, Watsy. Predators. For ruining magic again. Predators. It's not a Tuma. It is a Sliver. <laughs> so, Siphon Sliver is a card. It is very good. There's not a lot of black slivers. No. Um, but this is a very good one they kind of randomly threw in there. You know. I mean, it's, it's very good. I mean, Lifelink's awesome. It works really well with the green ones, obviously, because they just get all bigger and big Lifelink creatures. Right. Um... Which is cool. I mean, and, and by itself, it's still a 2-2 lifelinger. So it's, it's good, but you really need it in the sliver deck for it yeah. to be awesome. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's not that high of a pick. I mean, you're able no. to, like, you open it up in pack three, and you're like the mono black drafter. I mean, I would keep going. I'm not going to, like, you know, oh, my God, siphon sliver. I'm, you know, I'm going to want to see maybe a piece of removal or something yeah, that I, I would take over this guy. But in the sliver deck, obviously, you're really excited to see him. Mm -hmm. uh, in standard, if there's a sliver deck, I want to. I say he's a part of it. Oh, he's a big part of it. I mean, one of the big things is racing and lifelink is great. Mm -hmm. Now, tenacious D, baby. Tenacious D. Woo -woo. 
<laughs> Tenacious D. I love it. I couldn't believe it. I read the name and I was like, yeah. Please give us a Tenacious D card for real. Oh, man. That's, best, how I, that's how I get Jack Black playing this I game. Know, I know. The best is like the sword kind of looks like a cheap fishing pole to me. Like that's the first time I saw it. I just thought it was a fishing pole. <laughs> I'm gonna come get you. I mean, it's just it's because that little line over his left shoulder right. looked like I thought like maybe it was like the line, like the or real yeah, yeah. The, the line by itself. Yep, yep, yep. So if Tenacious D dies, you may pay some mana and get it and back. Cry. Oh, you get it back. Never mind. And be and be sad. I mean, it's no reassembling skeleton, but okay. I mean, no, it's the greatest card in the world, by far. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Sure is. No, I mean, it does have some implications with uh, the Sacrifice Zombie. Yeah, I, I mean, it does. And there, there's some really cool combos that I think you can have mm -hmm. in there. There's, I mean, you know, if those who really want to play the Altar's Reap, this is the card they're going to be like, yes. dude, I could totally, like, pay two and then, like, pay four total and draw two cards and burp, 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 burp. And I'm sure you can. And I'm sure there's worlds in which that actually works. But in the real world, that's really cute, and they'll just kill you in the meantime. Mm -hmm. So it, it's a cool card, but just like Reassembling Skeleton, which was a Mana more. Just it was worth it and because it, you could do it whenever. Yeah, then you could return it whenever. This one, you sort of have to keep two mana up in order to get mm -hmm. the maximum value and the maximum value of a 1-1. One, one. Yeah. Mm. Not great. Don't pick it high. No. It does have some cute combos if you can make them work. Mm -hmm. Undead Minotaur, there you go. There we go. Half of their Minotaur. They took the first one. They took the second one. They stitched and they had their abomination. Well, Here no, we they, the cut them, they cut them apart. Oh, they cut, oh okay. So That's the story, yeah. See, they were together. They were stuck together and now they cut them apart. Really? No, I'm no, no, don't read the play. What are you talking no about? Dude, man, you're breaking my <laughs> worldview here, man. Like, this, like, I, you know, I'm like thinking the Minotaurs are fighting. Well, no, they were fighting. Head, okay? No, okay, Saw so Minotaur A was cheating on Minotaur B with right. Minotaur B's girlfriend. Mm -hmm. He got mad, he took his axe, cut him in half. It's like and now the Minotaur they're Melrose place or something. It is. All right, so three mana, two, three. Whew. It's pretty mediocre. It's mediocre. It's not going to be great. You're going to get it late. You're not going to. And even though the flavor says says it, you can't take two undead minotaurs, put them on top of each other, and say you have a four six. That's just not how it works. It's bad. Yeah. You can double block though and try to. Then make you it have work. a four six. Yeah. Don't don't take them highly, okay? Yeah. Don't do that. It's not going to ever see constructive play either. Vampire Warlord. This is I thought was a really cool design. I yeah. I enjoyed. I enjoyed the design of this card just because, A, I think the art's amazing, mm -hmm. by the way. I think the art is wow. Um, the dead body on the right is so just chilling to me. <laughs> He's just like, hey. I mean, the, the stats are cool. You know, I, I love the flavor of it. I think it's brilliant. Like, the, for me, a lot, goes, a lot goes right with this card, just that it feels right. All of it feels correct. In terms of, like, power level and blah, 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 that to me is separate because I don't think it's very high. For me, I'm just like... I love this card because it's a vampire warlord. It looks like a vampire warlord. It acts like one. Mm -hmm. You know, it eats other guys to keep himself alive. Mm -hmm. All the flavor is there. This one's just like dripping blood with flavor. Literally dripping with flavor. <laughs> um, and and oh. my side of like liking to sacrifice creatures and, and things like that, like I saw all the stats of this card before I saw its price tag. Mm. And I saw five, and I was like, you got to be kidding me. Yeah, I mean, they priced it right out of being yeah. A, competitive, and B, really strong and limited. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's also one of those things, as a 4-2, that just, ha just has to sack a guy to regenerate, you probably don't want him to be that good anyway. That's true. So, I, I get it. I understand it, but, you know. I'll stick to my Falcon Wrath Aristocrats. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> Which is a good card. It's fine, man. This card is not nearly as good. Nope. Uh, don't, don't pick him early. I... You'll probably get him on the round. You know, I think you're going to get him on the wheel. Close. I mean, I think he's a little bit better than like ninth or tenth. I mean, he's still four power, and like late game, all your bad cards are traded for another life of the vampire warlord. So that's not bad. It's not terrible. Yep. It's just not something I'm picking or like super early. There's a lot of removal I'd rather have. There's a lot of things with evasion no, and intimidate I I'd rather have. Um, I do like that this is a sack outlet to once you have your bog brew rich. And your festering newts, and you have a sack outlet. Gotta get the newts going. Yep. New newt. Vile rebirth, the vilest. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't that vile last time we saw it. It wasn't yeah, that good. Man, I wanted it to be good. I wanted it to be so good. It just wasn't. 
that makes me sad. I mean, but you know, then they—I mean—they printed like "Purify the Grave" and stuff, and "Purify the Grave" and "Beckon Apparition," and rest in and peace, and rest in peace, and cards now that mean you don't. news and death right shaman. Cards that mean you don't have to play this ever. Yeah. So don't play this ever. Um, in limited. No. I think it's fine, but there's not a lot of graveyard interaction, so I don't know how good a 2-2 two -two, uh, for one black on, like, turn three or four is. Right. And I, I really have a feeling don't. it's not that good. I don't think so either. You know, I mean, like, yes, you're probably able to run it. Yes, you're probably going to get the 2-2, two -two, but does that get you where you want to go? I don't think so. It doesn't feel right. No. Ring Flesh is awesome. Yeah, this is a very good, it's a, it's a negative giant grow. So, like, it, it's not always going to kill creatures, but it's really good in combat. Like, just like you put your... 3-3 three, three in front of their 3-3 three, three and ring flesh their guy, and then you don't lose your guy. Uh, right. du another thing that's really good is double blocking. So, for example, if they have a 4-4, four, four, you can block with two 2-2s, two, ring flesh it. It kills it, they don't kill one of your guys. Yep. The, the, the possibilities with this removal spell is fantastic. Um, I, I would argue that it's probably better than Disfigure in some ways. Uh, disfigure is one black for minus two, minus two. In some ways, in some for example, your literally your example of a four four blocked by two two twos. This card is better. Okay, maybe it is, but I'm not gonna Thank admit you. it. Thank you. I like it. I get to use his <laughs> own words against him. <laughs> yeah. That's what I live for. All right, either way, ring flesh <laughs> is a piece of removal. You pick it after bombs, super high, amazing limited. Amazing art too. Sweet art. I love the art. I think yeah. the art is so weird and cool. Yep. Super awesome. Just actual flesh is just being I don't cool. think it was ever played and constructed. No. And it probably never will be. No, but it's just a good limited trick. But for a limited trick, it is an awesome one. Zathrid Necromancer. So whoo, everyone is loving this card. Why wouldn't they? I I think it's <coughs> awesome and cool, but the problem is I keep thinking of every scenario and standard of Here where I want this card. All right, when do you want this card? I don't know. So what? I don't want it in a Champion of Parish deck because, like, I want to, like, be aggressive. All right, so you're telling me that if I went Doom Traveler, Cartel Aristocrat, Zathra Necromancer, that's bad. It's not bad, but it's not that good. Is it worse than going uh, Doom Traveler and a Cartel Aristocrat into Blood Artist? Uh, no, but, but like, maybe I think it might be worse than going Lingering Souls on turn three. Like, do, following those two up with Blood Arse is never good. Like, Blood Arse is, like, your turn four spell. Kay. Like, usually double spell uh, with four mana with Blood Arse. But, like, I think it's good, but it doesn't match well up against a lot of creatures. And it's good against control because you get the creatures to come back, but you're already, like, doing that with a lot of your other elements. Mm -hmm. But, like, I, at the sacrifice of playing, like, non- Humans, uh, is it better than that? I don't think so. Like you, you have to cut back on your voices, your scavenge and uses, <coughs> your lingering <coughs> souls tokens. Like you have to be very dedicated to human based deck. Mm -hmm. But once I'm dedicating myself to human based deck, why am I not just playing Blitz? Well, this could also be the card that goes into the Angel of Glory's Rise. You know, Humaninator. Human no, you don't need this. Humaninator. Is isn't Hot Master just better because it gives you some life too? Uh, yeah. Oh, come on, man. Help me out here. I'm trying. No, this, this is my card. to be sweet. It's Rolling Reanimator. Came back. Everyone, every single person. I want it to be good because every single person that I've talked to, even Jerry Thompson, is like, I want to play this card. And, and like, I keep trying to build decks and I keep trying to find the specific home for it, but nothing feels better than just playing all these awesome, like, non-human creatures. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I can understand, like, voice is hard to say no to. Yeah. You know what I mean? It really is. And Scavenger News, like, once it hits the, the format, it's going to be a thing. And, you know, again, my favorite, my second favorite card is the Lifebane Zombie more than the Zathra Necromancer because mm -hmm. I know how good that Lifebane Zombie is immediately going to impact standard, like, with, like, a freight train. Like, all these, you know, the, re, the, the junk aristocrats, yep. you know, the junk reanimators. Like, they don't want to see that card. Um, whereas, you know, here, it kind of is going to have to replace, you know, a lot of people say... Oh my God, this card's amazing. And the next card, the next sentence is, well, what do you take out? And yeah. then anything that you take out, is it actually better, you know, or is it actually worse than the Zathra Yeah, Yeah, it's making the decks better. And I don't, right. I don't actually think it is. I think this card is very good and it probably is better than I'm saying right now. Like, don't get me wrong, if you pre order these and you want it to work, I'm, I'm going to build decks and I'm going to test. I'm going to test literally everything about Junk Aristocrats. Um, under the sun for the next couple weeks because those are the cards I like the most. Right. So I have a human version, I have a non-human version, I have a very sack version, I have a very Angel of Throne version. Like, I gotta figure out what's best, but mm -hmm. for right now, I mean, just in theory, I don't think this card is that good. 
I, I love the card for its possibilities. I do too. I mean, it is exciting. pretty sweet, yeah. Super exciting. Uh, and no doubt, like, the entire player base was set afire with, with giggles of delight as soon mm -hmm. as they saw this card. Woo! Card is sweet. All right, Haunted Plate Mail. Here we go. I like this, this card. This card was one flying away, one flying keyword from being instantly cubable. It would have, if it had become a 4 4 flying spirit artifact creature, yeah. it would have been absolutely amazing. It would have been mm -hmm. ridiculous. Like, it would have been windmill slam into every cube right alongside Batter Skull. When it's not a flyer, it gets a little. I can agree it gets with that because. Quite it, a bit worse. It doesn't help win the games right away. And. Yeah, yeah. It, it does, it does kind of suck because uh, I think the, the, the way they designed it, though, is they didn't want it to be a control card, they wanted it to be an anti control card. That's what I saw. Like, it's sure. an expensive equipment, but, like, you play it and they wrath, and you're like, hit you for four, play some more stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's what, that's what I saw out of this card. Like, I do not want a creature that gets to blink in and out of existence, uh, like, with my control decks. Like, that's just as scary to me. I don't want that to happen. Sure. Uh, so, I mean, it is a very unique card. I definitely like that, like, the flavor of, like, when something dies inside of it, that spirit then becomes part of it and it just animates itself. It's cool. It's super cool. And the yeah. you know, like Gavin Verhey was saying when he first got to Wizards, this was the first card he he designed. That's so awesome. Isn't yeah. that cool? Yeah. I was like, wow man, way to change magic, brah. That's sweet. Yeah, that that is cool. I think it's great. It's a beautiful design. It's a super cool way to think about it. Um I think it, like it, for me it's like a windmill in limited. The card seems nuts. Oh yeah. The card is ridiculous. Um, you know, oh you took care of all my guys. Guess I only have a four four now. And then I play anything else ever, no matter what the top deck is, and it gets plus four, plus four. Yep. Like, thanks, Child of Night. <laughs> Being a six, five. <laughs> yeah. Like, card is super sick and limited. Feel free to, you know, high five your buddies when you open yep. it and sealed. Um, in standard? No. I'm not, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say no. I'm going to say this thing might I'll have some potential. I'll say it for you. No. Fine. <laughs> I see what you did there. No. Best art in the set. Oh, yeah, it's by far the best art in the set. It's like the sweetest art ever. That's what I was talking about earlier. Okay, I didn't I know said, this you were talking about. Yeah, this is the best art in the set. I can't I actually want to own this card because of how amazingly cool it looks. It's just like this machine on top. Is it like supposed to be a machine on top of a giant, or is that just rock? I think it's just rock, but yeah. it looks so amazing. It can be oh, a, yeah. a giant, too, or whatever, but, you know, I, I, the, the, the imagination that went into this yep. was awesome. I mean, absolutely. I don't know who wrote the art description, but... Kudos, you're a genius. This is amazing. I love this. Millstone has been around for a long, long time. It used to actually be a win condition back in the day. It's been in Magic since its inception. and Or it could have been in Antiquities. I'm not 100% now. Uh, but regardless, it's been around forever. It used to be a win condition. It's no longer because it's bad. Putting the top two cards of someone's library into their graveyard is quote-unquote bad. But the mill players love it. Mm -hmm. And again, God, that artwork. It is. I mean, it's uncommon. This is the first time it's ever been printed as a non-rit, right? Uh, I want to say so, but I'm not yeah, sure. I think it is. And and being uncommon means you might be able to pick up some late ones and draft and potentially be in that strategy. Uh, but yeah, I think the the art is absolutely magnificent. The flavor text is sweet. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm not I'm not excited that it got reprinted. Like it doesn't really do anything for me. But it's cool. Like the art's cool. I finally understood your whole saying of I, I'm not excited. It's here or no. I'm not going to play with it. I don't think it's good, but I'm excited it exists. Yep. I finally, finally get it, because that's 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 what I like about this. Yeah, I, I love that it exists. I think it's brilliant art. It's beautiful. I don't want to play with it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pyromancer's Gauntlet is. I mean, like I can imagine the developer dance that happened with this card. You know what I mean? Like, well, let's try this number, and let's try that number, and let's try it be plus one, and then we'll have it be three mana. Oh, that's broken. Let's try it be four mana. Oh, that's kind of lame. Well, let's be five and bump it to two, you know? I mean, yeah. da Like, the, you know, these numbers, the five and the two right here, like, th those probably changed a bunch of times. I, I remember reading something about the development. Did they actually? Because uh, it seems like... Yeah, as I, yeah I, I recall, I'm not exactly sure where, where I read it. I want to say it was a Sam Starter yeah. bit, but... Uh, where, where they took multiple iterations of mm -hmm. numbers and switched them around, and I can imagine it was kind of maddening after a while. Oh yeah, for sure. And to I mean, figure out how to make it work. I mean, I th I just think of it as the fixed swath storm or mm -hmm. the pyromancer swath. Right. Uh, I mean, that card just kind of was a feel bad. Like it had to be a combo turn. You couldn't just play it and do things. But like this card, like can make some you know Chandra's really sweet. I like how it's like. A red plunge. Just say Chandra. Can like, at this point, Chandra's just tell us Gauntlet. Chandra. Chandra's Gauntlet. Come on, yeah, guys. Like, well, but see, she's a Pyromaster. 
She's not a pyromancer in this set. I'm not kidding. What's a and pyromaster? Exactly. What is it? I don't know. It don't make no <laughs> sense. But anyway, as a card, is it? God, it doesn't no, feel good at all. Of course not. All. No. Are you kidding? Look at this card. Is it not good? It's bad. Yeah. It's a joke. No, no. this card's good. This card is fantastic. This do, card, so Do not good. play that gauntlet. Don't. All right, um, so. For anyone that was here during Scars of Mirrodin, mm -hmm. and, and I was back then saying play Ratchet Bombs and play Dragon Balls, play a bunch of artifacts, you don't really have to do that, but that card wasn't that good then. But I do believe it's much better now because there are more artifacts. There's more concentration of one drop. So, like, there's decks that run Burning Tremissary. Now, the thing about Burning Tremissary is it comes with a lot of other two drops for consistency. Right. So, the old decks that Ratchet Bomb weren't good against had a variation of one through five mana, but now. A lot of the aggressive decks are playing, you know, what's the uh, oh, the one mana hexproof spell, Glade Hover Elf or whatever. Wow, Glade, Glade Cover, Scout. Glade Cover Scout. Yeah, like the hexproof decks are having that Pilgrim, um, and also Ethereal Armor. A lot of two drops in in, in the right. Pilgrim stuff. It's all concentrated now. The, the converted mana cost. So even though the format's aggressive, this card can come down just in enough time to pop off these cards. So you can bring Ratchet Bomb in or board it in against the. The hex blades and the red, green, aggressive decks. Right. But then the same thing is people have been paying five mana for Gaze of Granite or whatever sometimes mm -hmm. to kill certain creatures. Right. This is just two mana to kill all tokens. Right, and it's also a, a card that comes down so early when you're able to to it like put it out on the play that mm -hmm. people begin playing differently. Yep. you know what I mean. Like if you're if you're the control deck and they're the Naya Blitz deck and they go like turn one Shammy the Parish and you go okay turn turn two Ratchet Bomb go, and then they go. Uh, <laughs> do I uh, emissary into Flint Hoof Boar or do I or emissary yeah. into Lightning Mauler? Because like I get one more turn with it, and they'll probably you know kill something. They'll probably away yeah. something next turn, and then the Ratchet Bomb will go up to two counters, and then you know what am I going to do? Or they're just going to kill the the champion. Yeah. You know, so like it, all of a sudden the game becomes like this weird uh, push and pull of when do they fire off the Ratchet Bomb? And how can I best get advantage out of it versus what you normally do, which is just like play dorks, burp, 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 burp. Yeah. And, and that to me is really cool. That's, that's one of the reasons I like the card so much. And, and also, you know, you finally, you finally blow the bomb or whatever, and then they're like, oh, shoot, sweet. I'm going to play all my dudes and blah, blah, blah. And then you just play another one. Yeah. <laughs> which is sweet. Um, but yeah, I, I like the push and pull that this card gives, and there's no doubt that it's powerful. Yeah, I think it's going to be much better than it was before just because of the fact that the, everything it costs either zero to three mana on the aggressive decks. And, right. and that was something that didn't happen before. This was a card that control decks needed. Yeah. Whether it's for tokens, for lingering souls, and you know, voice of resurgence tokens, mm -hmm. and blah, blah, blah. Um, or if it's just to stop the onslaught when you're able to yeah. slam it down turn two, you know, and start putting counters on. Also, it's sweet against, uh, against like, flip cards, too. Hunt Masters and Garrick's and things like that. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's a Staff of the Dead Magus. That's a really cool-looking staff with the I like, spine. I like I that. I love the spine. It's sweet. <laughs> the spine's cool, but I like that <laughs> the only value the staffs have is to tell us when we're done with the set. Well, <laughs> that's the yeah, closing. <laughs> that's probably more value than a lot of spiky players are going to get out of it. Yeah. The casuals are going to love it. Yep. Um, I'm actually really appreciative that it's uncommon, so I don't have to see it so often in packs. Mm -hmm. um, but, ladies and gentlemen, that was an hour and a half of talking about some magic Set 2014 black cards. Woo! Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to go into the red. We're going to gruel it up for the next two videos, Woo! then we're going to get some pie. We're going to get some red zone, get some pie. Are you guys sick of hearing about pie? Yeah, I'm not. <laughs> I don't think they are. Nope, 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 nope. <laughs> and we will see you guys tomorrow for all the red cards for Evan Irwin, Brad Nelson, tapping the cards so you don't have to.